In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to Grafham Rectory once again for our Parish Eucharist on this Sunday, uh, the second Sunday of Epiphany. And so we pray together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we bring before God those times uh, which we look back on now with some uh, regret, things we did or didn't say that uh, we should or shouldn't have done. We bring before them knowing that God's forgiveness is, uh, uh, is coming towards us even as we pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the second Sunday of Epiphany. Let us pray. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We listen to the Gospel reading for today, which is taken from St. John's, uh, John's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
now going to share a reading with you from uh, a book written some time ago now called Water into Wine by Stephen Verney, who was the Bishop of Repton. The next day, the first disciples begin to gather round the teacher. Some are attracted to him. One is told, follow me. Others are brought by their friends. One of these, Nathaniel, from Cana in Galilee, a village near to Nazareth, is reluctant. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth, he asks. Come and see, says his friend, Philip. With these new companions, Jesus prepares to return from the desert to begin his life's work in Galilee. And he tells Nathanael what they may expect to see. Amen. Amen, I say to you. Or very truly, I tell you. In John's Gospel, this is the form of words that Jesus uses to emphasise something of special importance. You will see heaven opened and the angels of God going up and coming down upon the Son of Man. He is reminding them of the story which they all knew from childhood of Jacob's dream. Jacob, the founding father of the people of Israel, was a devious character who deceived his own father Isaac and cheated his brother Esau and had to flee away from home. But at the same time, he was searching and longing to know God. He wrestled all night with an angel and said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. It was such a man, daring to look into the depths and the heights within himself, who one night, at a crisis in his life, lay down in the desert to sleep. He dreamt that he saw a ladder which rested on the ground with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were going up and coming down upon it. The angels, God's messengers, were carrying the earthiness of Jacob up to heaven and were bringing the presence of God down to stand beside him and protect him on earth. Now, Jesus says to his followers, you are going to see the reality of which our father Jacob dreamt. You will see heaven opened and a ladder joining earth and heaven. I shall be that ladder and upon me the angels will be going up and coming down. The angels will be going up from earth, lifting up to God the needs and the egocentricity of mankind, of humankind, and they will be coming down, bringing to the world the mercy and the truth of God. So Jacob, he was in a bad way when he lay down in the desert to sleep. And Nathaniel was cynical about that invitation that Philip was offering. Neither one of these were expecting then something to happen that would change the trajectory and the perspective of their lives. So we know a bit about the unexpected changing us at the moment and we may understandably see it as not a good thing. It does have power to change us for the good, however. God is found in unexpected times and places for those who allow themselves to overcome their despair and come and see. Amen. We affirm our faith in the 
affirmation of faith we find here. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we bring before you all that is uppermost in our hearts today in this world that is so filled with distress and despair. We thank you for those who are helping to pull us through. We pray for our NHS workers and for police officers, all worn down by caring for and, for, and by protecting others that they will know your consolation. We pray for hospitals, that they may not be overwhelmed by those who are so desperately ill. Lord, we pray for all who are vulnerable, that vaccines may prove reliable protection, and ultimate restoration of freedom, and that everyone may remain careful until that time. Lord, we pray for all who are worried about their futures, those who are overworked, those who have no work, for families juggling work and childcare and schooling. We pray for families who are dependent on food vouchers or parcels to feed their children. Pray for all young people today who are entering adulthood in an uncertain time. Lord, we thank you for our community, for this beautiful environment in which we live and for which we have a duty of care. We pray for all who are isolated, or unwell or sad at this time in a moment of quiet, we bring before you those whose names are on our hearts. Lord, it is hard to see this time in a positive light. We know, though, that it is in the darkest times that your light breaks out most clearly in the love and the care and the sacrifice that is made. Help us to play our part. Help us to submit willingly to help each other through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The peace. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour, sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you. You came in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread, and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again, Lord of all life. Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Saint Giles and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, 
have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. The body of Christ, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for us all. an act of spiritual communion for all who are unable to share in the sacrament physically at this time. We pray, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you physically, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly. Amen. A post-communion prayer for a time when we are away from church. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of watching, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. Thank you for sharing in worship today and please do let me know if you would like to share in a short service 15 to 20 minute service of night prayer which is offered by, via zoom on wednesday evenings at seven o'clock uh, i will be happy to send you a link to that service the blessing May the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>